Hello Knockouts, Tanya TKO here and I just want you to just take a few moments to just look at me in all of my feminine splendor and glory. <laughs> I just want you to just take a look at how beautiful femininity is. Today we're going to be talking about something that I feel is really painful but it's something that needs to be spoken about. It's this phenomenon that we've seen all too often. A young brown skinned girl bristling with young femininity and sexuality who is being beat, whipped, thrashed and bashed for experimenting sexually for having sexual urges and desires, for dancing in a manner that we feel is quote unquote too sexual, or having the gall to couple herself with a male that this family feels that she should not be coupled with. So their response to that is to whip her, beat her, film it, shame her. I even saw one where they were punching her and cursing her out. Now I am Caribbean American. I spoke about this before a few years ago when I was still forming my my ideas about this and I, and I had to really take a moment to really sit back and think about what it is that I was seeing because I grew up in an environment with corporal punishment and I also grew up in an environment where it was taboo for us to to have interest in boys and I always thought that it was just a little bit hypocritical because I was allowed to have female friends up in my room and all of this other stuff and I thought that it was bizarre that my parents didn't know whether or not I was gay or straight but they didn't really seem to mind too much if a girl was in my room or if we had the door closed and all of that but even so much as talking to a boy on the phone or attempting to give a boy my phone number and it was highly problematic so I want to talk about this phenomenon and I personally believe that this is one of the main themes that is the destruction of the black family and I feel very strongly about it so strongly in fact that I created a woman's retreat for us to go out into the wilderness to retreat from society to heal our fractured femininity. So if you want more information about the woman's retreat, I'm going to put the links below. And to give the introduction, I am Tanya TKO and I'm a self-love specialist and a relationship expert from tanyatko.com. I hope you learn to love yourself and each other. And one of the major parts of what destroys our esteem as people is the way that our natural sexuality is regarded. So we've seen this theme all too often where a girl attempts to be sexual or experiment in some sort of sexual way and that is deemed inappropriate or fast and they then attempt to beat the sexuality out of her, beat the sexual feelings, the urges, the experimentation, the desires out of her. And then just five years later, with no conversation and no indoctrination into the world of adulthood, then all of a sudden she's supposed to have a healthy idea about hers and other people's sexuality. And I urge you to hear me out because it took me some years to be able to really pontificate on this and really see and do research on what the result of this is to be able to come to my new point of view. If you're new to my videos in my channel, make sure that you subscribe. We're going to continue the conversation in the comments because this is a really volatile theme and I want to hear from you and I'd like to discuss maybe an alternative. I'll give you guys a little bit of information. When Tiara turned 12, she started looking at porn and she started posting pictures of herself on the internet, pictures that she thought was cute or made her look grown up or whatnot. Cause like my father's computer had gotten an infection and like all of these porn pop-ups were coming, etc. And then when we started investigating it, where this was coming from, it turns out that it came from Tiara and she was 12 at the time. And then she had created a Facebook page and she was posting pictures of herself on Facebook. And so it's like, what do you do? And look, look, I get it. You have a young girl in your home and female sexuality is so precious. Female bodies are so precious and you want to keep your girl safe. But what is it that you do? What do you do? You see that they're behaving in a manner that they may not be quite ready for just yet and you want them to stay safe, you want to keep their body protected, what is the best way to do that? How do you teach a girl to value her body by whipping and beating it? How do you teach a girl that sex is, is natural 
by attempting to squash or squelch the sexual feelings from her? How do you expect for her to then grow up and to be a well-adjusted woman who's comfortable with her body, comfortable with her femininity, comfortable with her sexuality, and able to go out there into the world coming into contact with other people, male and female, who all have different views about sex and sexuality themselves. What is it that we teach young girls? What is it that we teach boys? What is it that we have inside of ourselves, the ideas that we have that we perpetuate onto our family about sex and sexuality? Have we healed our own broken femininity? Have we nurtured our own goddess divinity? Are we comfortable? And so yes, I wore this outfit deliberately with my bosom out and with my skin looking so pumped up and caramelly. And I wore this outfit particularly for this subject. I know that this bosom, I know that it'll make some people uncomfortable. I know that it'll make some people the, the feeling of lust, you know, grow inside of them. And I know that for some people, it'll make the feeling of anger grow inside of them. And for others, it will embarrass them because they're not willing or able to be able to express themselves femininely, sexually, sensually themselves. So let's go forward. So Tiara started looking at this adult material adult material online. So what we did is we sat down and we had a conversation with her one by one, each person in their own way, having their own conversation with her. My sister had her conversation. My brother had a conversation with Tiara. My father had a conversation. And I sat down and I had a conversation with Tiara one-on-one -on -one in private. Sex is a natural part of, of life. It's a natural part of growing. If you have a daughter, you know that at some point she's going to start going through puberty. At some point she's going to start feeling feelings that she doesn't understand. Her body's going to start changing in ways that she may not be prepared for, that you may not be prepared for. But this is a natural progression of life. This is, it's, it, it, what is our plan? When you have a daughter, what is the plan? And how do we produce well-adjusted women from these little girls? So when I spoke with Tiara, I talked with her about what it is that she may be curious about. What was she looking for on these websites? Why is she posting these pictures? And, and what is it that she's hoping to get and to gain from it? Our job as guardians is to really be able to, to protect and nurture and cover a child until they're old enough to then take on that task themselves. But without conversation, without communication, how does a person then learn how to use their own philosophy? Research shows that you rob a child of their, of their critical thinking. You rob them of their esteem when you whip and you beat them. You don't allow them to really start taking on the mantle of adulthood little by little and being able to grow and ascend into the adults that they're going to be. So we stifle and we, and we cripple them. And the thing about it is that there's so many of us who have been beaten and brutalized by our parents because of sex and sexuality, shamed that we have all of this internal dysfunction that exists in there and we don't really know how to then deal with the sexuality in our children. And the reason that I feel that this is part of the destruction of the black family is because we can't have whole families with broken women. We can't have whole families with a, a healthy family structure with a woman who's fractured from her femininity. So we're taught very early on that there's some sort of curse that you were born with by being female. Because you see that the natural, the natural parts of life and, and growing and puberty and sexuality are okay for boys, but it's not okay for you. And there's never any, any any exit discussion, any debriefing when you're outside of the zone where your parents are quote unquote trying to protect you, but protect you from what? I believe that this is, I believe that this practice of whipping girls for sexuality is part of our hatred of women, part of our hatred of femininity, and part of our contempt, listen, because there's another side of it, part of our contempt for male bodies. I'm going to ask you this question and ask you to pontificate on it. If there were no boys, no men in this world, 
and the girl was twerking on Snapchat the way she was twerking. And I'm not showing the video because, as I've told you all before, violence is one of my triggers. Abuse is one of my triggers. And I don't feel it necessary to put this 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 video of this girl being with like the father was wrangling her arm way up behind her back and whipping her and thrashing her and lashing her and I don't feel it necessary to post up this girl's shaming video in here because we've all seen the the theme of it before and we all know it we've all seen it we've all known it so if there were no men in the world and she was putting up a twerking video, do you believe that she would have been whipped? Think about it. If there are no men at all in the world, none. Think about a world with no men, just women, just girls and women, and she's twerking on the same internet, on the same Snapchat. Do you think that her parents would have the same reaction? Do you think that she would be whipped for dancing and, and gyrating and doing her little twerking if there were no men in the world. So think about that. And what does that imply? Let's pontificate about this. I really want you to open up your mind about this. I really want you to open up your mind. And so we have to wonder, why is it that the presence of, of the male gaze is enough for you to want to beat your daughter into into sexual submission. And then when I talk about the contempt of, of male bodies, now imagine if this were a son who were on Snapchat bouncing his dick. Like let's say it's a 16 year old boy and he has on his little bathing suit and he's bouncing his dick online. Do you think his parents' reaction would have been to whip and beat and thrash punch, lash, pummel, and curse him out as a result of bouncing his dick on the internet. Why and why not? Let's talk about that. Get into the comments and talk. Let's have a real discussion about this. Now let's do the flip side. Now if their boy were twerking, let's say he was moving his buttocks and gyrating it, would he get whipped and beat? Why or why not? And it is my belief that if he were twerking and moving his buttock, etc., that his parents would have a violent reaction towards that as well. Like if a parent is a violent parent, that they would have a violent reaction to the boy moving his buttocks versus him bouncing his dick. And why? Let's talk about that. And the reason I feel that the twerking boy and the twerking girl would both elicit violence from violent parents is because of the hatred that we have for male bodies. Because if you do something that they feel is enticing to the male gaze, which is beckoning on male sexuality to come your way, then they will try to beat that sexual submission into you so that you do not attract the attention of male penetration. Because for many people, sex with a man is the worst thing that can happen to you for your daughters or your sons. This is part of the reason that I believe that so many parents in the black community are homophobic because of male penetration. Being penetrated by a male is the worst thing, the worst. Coming into contact with male sexuality, with the male body is one of the worst things that can happen to your child or your young adult. Why? Why do we hate men's bodies so much? So that we would whip a child for coming into contact with it or for participating in behaviors that we feel would beckon the male body or the male sexual gaze forward. Because think about this, think about this. I want you to think about the word slut and all of the derogatory terms that we have about women who have intercourse with, with men or too many men or whatever is considered too many men, right? Think about a young lady having sex with 30 young men. Think about that. And what ideas we'll have about her cleanliness and her worth and her viability as a future potential mate for someone. A young lady having sex with 30 young men, what do we think of her? Think about all the things that come up for you inside of your being. Let's talk about it. Let's have this conversation. Think about a young lady having sex with 30 other young ladies. Not at the same time, one at a time. What do we think about her? Does her worth diminish? Does her cleanliness diminish? Does her viability as a future mate, does that diminish? If we think about a young man having sex with 30 young ladies, does his worth diminish? Does he become dirty? 
Think about it, why or why not? Now flip that aside, a young man having intercourse with 30 other young men. What happens to his worth? His worth decreases. Why is it that having intercourse with a girl increases a boy's worth, but having intercourse with a boy decreases the girl's worth? Think about it, let's talk about it. Why is it that a young lady having intercourse with another young lady does not diminish her worth? Have you ever heard a, a, a lesbian called a slut? A whore, or whatever, a, a bot, whatever, whatever derogatory names that we have for girls who have sex with, with male people. So it's like on the one hand, we have this exaltation of the female body where we put it on a pedestal. But then we have the hatred of the male body where if that male genitalia comes into contact with that female body, that female body is now ruined. It's now sullied, it's dirty. But a girl increases the worth of a boy. But a woman touching her sexuality onto a boy increases his worth. And these are things that we really have to look into our programming because we live in a society where we just take these things for granted. We just take it come as it may. But these are things that we really need to talk about. So let's talk about it. Well, let's continue the conversation in the comments because I really want to hear your point of view on this. How do you teach a girl to love her body by abusing it? How do you teach a girl that her body is valuable by, by degrading it? By you then abusing, thrashing, and enacting violence upon her so-called precious body? How do you teach anybody that something is precious by lashing and thrashing against it? We have to start learning and understanding that these young girls have autonomy. Sex is not the worst thing that can happen to them. Contact with a boy is not the worst thing that can happen to them. This is a natural part of life. But what do we do to instill that self-love and the esteem into our daughters? And I'm telling you, beating, whipping, thrashing, bashing, and abusing is not it. We have to find another way. We have to. And far too many of us as black people are suffering from post-traumatic slave syndrome. So that we're like, ah, I was beat, I turned out fine. Are you fine? Listen, I get to talk to people off the record. I coach, I counsel, and I do therapeutic sessions with people every single day. And what it is that we call functioning is really dysfunction. Really dysfunction. We have ideas that are just not working for us both male and female, participating in the toxic masculinity of the patriarchy and perpetuating misogyny. Like I said, that's part of the reason that I'm doing the women's retreat, for us to come together as women to really heal this part of us inside. So on that note, let's get a hug. Let's hug because you know I'm looking too cute. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh, hug me. <laughs> Oh, love, love, love. Listen, I love you all very, very much. Go out there and love one another. But most importantly, what? Love yourself. And love yourself enough to know. Love yourself enough to really be at peace with your sex and sexuality. Because it's like we go from a very dysfunctional way of relating to sex to then expecting us to get into relationships, sexual relationships that are then functional when, it, when our whole ideas about sex comes from a dysfunctional place. So love yourself enough to recognize some of the, 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 the dysfunctional ideas that you may have inside of you before you perpetuate them onto your children, before you perpetuate them onto others. Find healing within yourself and your relationships. So listen, I am out. Thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure that you subscribe if you're new to my channel. Please do subscribe. We'd love to have you here in the family of knockouts. And make sure that you share the video. Thumbs up the video and leave your comment below. I'm about to jump into the comments right now and have some conversations with you all. Especially if you're of the belief that it's okay to whoop a girl, to whip her for having sexual feelings and sexual curiosities. Think about it, what's the worst that can happen? What is the worst? This is why, listen, this is why we have to teach our daughters autonomy. This is why 
<sighs> All right, look, we'll talk about it in the comments. We'll finish the conversation below.